Well, hello there. I'm Jay. Welcome to my booth. I am a self-employed individual, and of the many things that come with being self-employed, the pluses, the, the challenges, we'll call them, one of the biggest for me was taxes, figuring out how the heck to deal with them, how to set up my business so that I was getting the most out of it that I put into it, blah, blah, blah. And what better way to figure that out than with a PowerPoint presentation? Welcome back to high school, everybody. Uh, I just needed to figure out what the heck I was going to say, and this was the easiest way for me to do it. So first off, before we get into the nitty gritty, I'm a voiceover actor, an audiobook narrator. I'm not a CPA. This is based on my experience in my professional field with my life circumstances based off of, it's very individual to me. So take everything I say as sort of a guidepost, use my experience as a meter stick for yourself, and then go talk to somebody who knows your financial situation, your goals, your business, and uh, go with what they say and what's best for you. So what the heck is going on as a self-employed individual with taxes, blah, blah, blah. I got a few rules to set up before we dive into the nitty gritty. Rule number one, don't stress about it, baby. Listen, this can be confusing. This can be frustrating. This can be incredibly bureaucrat, but it doesn't have to stress you out. So if you feel yourself either in my talking about it or in your own journey getting overwhelmed, take a few seconds, take a breath, and just remember that I said it's all going to be fine and you're going to get through it and it'll work out just great. So don't stress. Rule number two, do what's best for you. I just mentioned it at the beginning, but you know your life better than I ever will. So if what I'm saying jives with you and it's helpful, fantastic. If you want to kick it to the curb, be my guest. I will not be offended in the slightest. Then rule number three, I am not a CPA. So just check with them before you make any of these calls uh, in your own life. All right, taxes. Buckle up, baby. Here we go. So what are you going to pay as a small business owner, as a self-employed individual? Well, there are different levels. The first is federal. You're going to pay this stuff. I won't get into the details because, you know, you're going to pay it. State, these are the things you're going to pay. And then you're going to pay local taxes, which break down to that. <clears throat> I may be missing some because, you know, what matters the most, it all matters. You're, they're all going to come. They're going to come for it all, whether you like it or not. On the federal side, your self-employment taxes. That's about it. That's the crux of a biscuit of what we're getting at and how we're going to try to save ourselves money with a business entity structure. So why does it matter? If you have a real job and you work for a company, they're going to issue you a W-2 and they're going to withhold taxes from your paycheck. You probably know the experience. You're like, oh man, I made a thousand dollars this week. Here I go. And then you get your check and it's for 20 bucks. <laughs> it's a little extreme, but they pull taxes out uh, on a week by week basis. These are the things that they'll pull out of it. They're going to issue a W-2, which is different from being a self-employed sole proprietor in some circumstances. You also might get some benefits from a real job. If you're self-employed, however, nobody's going to withhold the taxes for you. Your clients, the people you work for, pay you directly into your account. No taxes are taken out of your paycheck, which means you got to hold on to some cash to pay Uncle Sam when the time comes. You also aren't going to see many benefits, no retirement, no health care built into it. You can set that up for yourself, but your company's not going to handle it for you. So the reason we're here, business entities, how do we set ourselves up for success? Who, what are you? There's a sole proprietorship, an LLC or limited liability company, and a S Corp. We'll break them down individually. Sole proprietorship. If you do absolutely nothing, you're a sole proprietor, baby. Welcome to the fold. If you make above 600 bucks a year doing what you do best, it's taxable income. Uncle Sam's going to come hunting for it. Pass-through taxes. All the things we'll discuss are pass-through taxes. It's just a term that means it's not multiple things getting taxed. It's on your personal income tax. You don't have to file taxes as multiple things. 
Uh, don't get stressed out about it. There's no withholding. Nobody's taking taxes out. Clients will send you a 1099 provided that they pay you over 600 bucks a year. So for example, I work for Spotify one year and I do three ads for them. Each pays 500 bucks. Booyah. That's 1500 bucks over the course of a year, which means I'm going to get a 1099 from Spotify. If, however, I only do one of those jobs for 500 bucks, I'm under that payment threshold. They do not have to put me on the books as an independent contractor and send me a 1099. That's just something to keep in mind for tax season and look out for your 1099s as they come rolling through. So what are the pros? It's so easy because you probably already are a sole proprietor if you're not uh, doing any stuff. There's no extra paperwork. The money that you make, it's going to get taxed same way. You don't have to worry about any extra forms or stuff like that. So it's pretty simple. And you don't really need any extra financing stuff, no banking things. Uh, now the cons, you're not going to get any tax breaks, which, you know, you might be looking for in certain other organizations. There's also no separation between you and your business. We'll get into that in a moment with the other business entities. And then some businessy elements, Maybe a little bit more challenging to come by. It might be a little bit more difficult to set up a business bank account, uh, get a line of credit, a business credit card. It might be a little bit more challenging to keep your books straight, blah, blah, blah. Not the end of the world, but uh, something to bear in mind. So who's it right for? If you're just starting out, probably right for you. If you're not doing whatever it is you're doing, in my case, voiceover as a full-time gig, Stick with a sole proprietorship. It's probably easier for you. If you're not making a big chunk of your annual income as this, or if you're not above a certain payment threshold annually, you're probably fine being a sole proprietorship. Th these <clears throat> numbers aren't uh, thresholds, really. Uh, they're just sort of ballpark figures. If you don't need benefits, say your spouse or partner has you on their health care and you don't need to hunt that through your own business structure, you're fine. And there's nothing wrong with being a sole proprietor. So then we move on to the limited liability company or an LLC. You got to sign up for it. You'll hire somebody, uh, send some forms in somewhere, and the government then says, boom, you are now an LLC. And in effect, it's pretty much the same as a sole proprietorship. The only difference is you have liability protection. Your liability is limited. Ho ho. And the way it does that is instead of you as a sole proprietor being the business and the person in the same thing, it splits you up. So now there's the limited liability company and the person. And that becomes important if you want to protect yourself, your personal assets. So here's my personal savings account, my personal finances, my house, my car. All that stuff that I as a human being own. And then there's my company over here. Say my company runs into trouble and they get sued for whatever reason. They can come up after company assets. They can't take my house. That's more or less what it breaks down to. LLCs are pretty easy to set up. LegalZoom, other companies like that, they do it really quickly and really simply. <clears throat> you can also get better separation between your business stuff and your personal stuff. It's easier to set up bank accounts, expense stuff, and you can possibly get loans if you need. Some cons, you're not gonna see any tax breaks really. It's pretty much the same as a sole proprietorship. Uh, and that's pretty much the only other con. LLCs, they're right for self-employed people who want that business and personal separation. They want the limited liability, the don't assuminess. For voiceover, actor, audiobook narrators, it's probably not an important thing. I don't see many folks being sued in that regard. But if, say, you were a plumber and you install plumbing in this house and then all of a sudden a pipe bursts or something or something goes wrong and the family of that house is suing you for the damages, uh, you might want that limited liability protection so that your personal assets are separate. Then we move on to S-Corp, or the LLC with S-Corp taxation status. This is when bureaucracy gets a little heady. We'll just call it an S-Corp for the sake of simplicity. In effect, how it works with me, at least, or how I did it, you form an LLC, 
then you elect taxation status as an S corp. So effectively, it's treated as an S corp. All right. It's a bit more complicated. Again, don't stress about it. We'll, I'm going to talk you through why it helps and what it matters. So it's a bit more paperwork, but you'll get more tax savings. And you, there's a little bit more of an upfront setup cost as well as maintaining compliance costs as the year go on. You got to send certain forms in. You got to make sure certain things are up to date, blah, blah, blah. So why exactly does an S-Corp help you save on taxes? So in an S-Corp, you're going to set up a payroll for yourself to pay yourself an annual salary out of. Now, you remember those self-employment taxes? This is where it comes into play. So in setting yourself up a payroll, you're going to issue yourself a W-2, which is going to withhold taxes, and then you're going to set up a salary based on whatever is reasonable for you, your job, your career path. All of that stuff is subject to the self-employment tax. Effectively, you're taking a portion of your income cordoning it off into a salary and saying this is my real person job over here and that is self-employment tax then there's another nugget over here which is the stuff above the amount you make more than your salary and that you can pull out of your business accounts as a shareholder distribution which is not subject to that self-employment tax so again in s corp we're taking our whole income over the course of a year splitting it into two pools, your salary and your shareholders' distributions, to help minimize the amount of money you make that's subject to that self-employment tax. We'll break it down a little bit more in case that needs a little bit more clarification. If you're a sole proprietorship or an LLC and you make $100,000 a year, heck yeah, then you had 20 k in expenses. So you're not going to have a salary. There's no taxes withheld. Your total income for that year was $80,000. Revenue minus expenses comes out to your total income. This is the amount of taxes you would owe on that year. Uh, so then we move over to an S Corp. Same deal, made 100 bucks. We got 20K in expenses, but we're taking a section of our income and saying this is what you can tax that self employment tax on. That's our salary, the 50K. This is the amount of taxes that will come out of that via our payroll service that we've set up. And then everything else, all of the money beyond that is this amount, which is not subject to that self-employment tax. So this stuff, you're cutting that bit out. It's still going to get taxed, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be taxed as high as the other stuff. Which means at the end of the day, you're saving, if this is your financial breakdown for the year, you're saving about 3200 bucks, give or take, on taxes, which, you know, is worth it. So here's again what it breaks down to. In a sole proprietorship or an LLC, everything you make is subject to the self-employment tax. In an S-Corp, we're splitting it up, salary, shareholder distributions, or owner's draws, and those are going to be taxed differently. So the pros of an S-Corp, you've got your liability protection. You're going to get some of those tax savings. You're also going to have the personal and business separation, which again, for bank accounts, expense tracking, you'll also be have some access to loans. The big thing here is the tax savings. Cons, again, it's a little bit more challenging to set up. You got to do more paperwork, both annually on the setup and as you go through and you have a little bit more additional expenses to operate an S-Corp. Um, you got to pay for your payroll service. You're probably going to need an accountant and just some other smaller things that are built into that. And for me, at least, setting up my salary was just a little bit stressful and challenging. But don't worry, I'll cover you on that as well. So who's an S-Corp right for? If you're a self-employed person with a variable income on an a on a year to year basis. So for example, in your first year, you make 50k. Great. Now that amount is probably not going to see a ton of benefit from an S corp, but in your next year, say you book a six figure job like a huge voiceover contract, that's not typical and it's pretty irregular and so your income for that year is going to skyrocket relative to what would be normal 
You don't want all of that to be taxed as if it were normal. Uh, so having a S corp will help you to cordon off more of that money, that big job that you got at a lower tax rate. And then on the next year, year three, when everything returns back to relative normalcy, it goes back to a lower income rate. And so your salary and your owner's draws can sort of modulate and shift and adapt depending on how much you make year to year and save you money as you go. So that's a big thing. If it's if what you do in your self-employment is your full-time gig and you make above 40K a year doing it, you'll probably see some tax savings by becoming an S-Corp. 40K is the number that I see most often uh, in my research for doing this. But again, talk to your CPA and see if it's right for you, your situation, your life, because uh, it may be slightly different. Then you can also, as an S-Corp, because you're sort of setting yourself up as an employer for yourself, uh, you may be able to get access to some healthcare and retirement benefits through certain organizations. I'll uh, name a few, and some will be linked in the description um, that you might look into there. So, hot tips. This is going to be for each of the organizational entity structures, best practices based off of my experience. For sole proprietorship, use an accounting or bookkeeping keeping software that helps you estimate, uh, calculate your estimated taxes. The one that I used was QuickBooks Self-Employed. And the way that worked was I had my personal checking account and both money that I had personally would go into that. And then business finances would go into that as well. So I and what QuickBooks did, the self-employed version at least, I could categorize things as this is business income, this is a business expense, this is personal income, this is a personal expense. And then on a quarterly basis, at four times a year, you're required or asked to pay estimated taxes so that you're not hit with a big lump sum at uh, tax season in April. And this software would calculate that based off of how I'd kept my books and pay it for me, which was a great stress saver, life saver, time saver. So check that out. Also, if you're a sole proprietorship, make sure even if you're paying the estimated taxes that you don't spend all of your money because no withholdings are coming out of your paychecks. Uh, it's important that you have, you're sitting on some cash when tax season rolls around just so that you don't find yourself in trouble if you're hit with a unexpected bill in that. Then as a sole proprietorship, you will be treated as an independent contractor. So again, companies will send you 1099s. I've just found it helpful to hang on to those, keep them in a filing cabinet or something like that, uh, just for a future reference and to have everything in mind. I'm not going to talk about LLCs because uh, they're relatively similar and the S-Corp is really what you should be launching towards if you're in a situation similar to mine. Do not try to set it up for yourself. Take it from someone who tried in order to save themselves some money. It is not worth the time, the money, the stress. Just hire a professional to help you set up your LLC to begin with. Then they'll send documents, they'll do all the paperwork for you so that you don't have to worry about it being right, that, that you didn't do it wrong, uh, and that things will be on time, that you're maintaining compliance. Just hire somebody to do it and accept that as a cost. You're saving money on taxes by doing this anyway, so just fold it into that savings in some way. And then when someone's helping you set up your payroll, they'll either uh, help you set it up categorically but also some payroll services, if not most of them, the one I use is Gusto, uh, helps you to like send forms to the government as needed. So you don't have to worry about maintaining tax compliance and all that jazz. The payroll will do it for you, which is really, really helpful. Then as you try to figure out what your reasonable salary is, there are a couple ways to go about it. But firstly, don't stress about it. It was stressful for me, but it's not the end of the world. The government's not going to hunt you down if you put the wrong number. As long as you're being fair and you're not exploiting it, for example, if you put your reasonable salary as $1, well, that may raise some eyebrows. 
but as long as you're being relatively fair, you should be fine. And you can do that by checking the numbers in your field. I, for example, googled voiceover artist salary New York metro area or New York City. And over a few websites, they give salary ranges on an annual basis going from lower earners to median average earners and then the top shelf earners. And I just sort of took an average of all of those and placed myself where I felt was fair. And within that, it's important to factor in your training, your skills, and the amount of time you're putting into it. For example, I have a terminal degree in performance. I've got an MFA in acting. It's the highest level of degree you can get, which means I've got a high level of training in my field, which then will bump my salary up accordingly to that level of training. I've also spent a lot of time, money, and energy in developing skills in audio engineering, in uh, my environment, in the uh, equipment that I have. All of those things then factor in and will nudge my salary, my reasonable salary, up a bit more. And then the amount of time. If it's a part-time job, you're only spending 20 hours a week doing it, or if you're spending 60 hours a week doing it, the range there will factor into your salary as well. And then lastly, count the number of hats you wear. So for me, I'm a voiceover artist, I'm an audiobook narrator, and I'm an actor. Those are all kind of the same talent hat. But then also, I'm my own customer service department. I'm my own bookkeeper. I'm my own marketing department. I'm my own uh, audio engineer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The list goes on. Each of those hats lumps into this giant organism that is your uh, self-employed individual business. And all of those will, again, modulate your salary either up or down. And each of those, how skilled you are at each individual thing. So I'm not a professional marketer, but so my salary, if I were to be a professional marketer, would be pretty low relative to the competition out there. Next, check with a CPA as you're thinking of forming your LLC about where you can set it up. Because this might give you some tax breaks depending on your living situation and or your state of residence or even the state in which you elect to form your LLC. A friend and colleague of mine, for example, through their family connections and the way that their life has gone, they were able to set up their LLC in a different state or a specific state where the tax laws were just more beneficial to them and their business. Uh, so... That's one thing to keep in mind and check with your LL, with your CPA as you're setting things up. Then, again, because we're self-employed, nobody's paying into a retirement account for us, and it's important to bear that stuff in mind as you go. And there are a bunch of different retirement accounts and health savings accounts that all have different sort of relationships to taxes or different tax behavior. Some are tax-free when you put money in, but are taxed when you pull money out. Some are taxed when you put money in, but not when you pull money out. Some are completely tax-free as long as you pay for certain things. I won't go into detail about these, but uh, look into them as you build your business out. Some of these might offer you additional uh, tax savings. Uh, you got to finish a PowerPoint presentation with a thanks slide. It's the only way to do it. It's the way I was raised. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions about this, anything voiceover related at all, uh, hit me up down below. And if you find this stuff helpful, I'd appreciate it if you took the time to click the buttons down there. It helps other folks find us if they might find it helpful too. Until the next one of these, be well, and I'll see you there. Toodles. Toodles.